Coming up on today's wrestling news, is there a TNA return in the works for this huge WWE AEW star? Tony Schiavone blasts that WCW documentary. Christian Cage doesn't hold back with this WWE slash AEW comparison. And a top AEW star trademarks his name. I'm Michael Hamflitz. And I'm Phil Chambers. And this is, is the, the Friday news. news. Yeah. Right, Phil. We're going right. to start with uh, Jeff Hardy. We can do that before the story. If he can do that before a running, right? You're the totally band. PW Insider were reporting that um, a TNA uh, return was on the cards for Jeff Hardy as a result of him potentially becoming an AW free agent. It's been a while. It's been a while and Fightful Select have uh, backed this up. Um, he will become a free agent on Friday, today. Uh, potentially as our American friends are watching this video right now, Jeff Hardy is available. Um, it was originally believed... In case you want to book him. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, it was originally reported apparently, uh, well, so Fightful Select are reporting originally that um, AW were uh, going to add injury or sabbatical time to Jeff Hardy's contract as is now the way in wrestling when wrestlers yep. take time off but that doesn't appear to be the case as of Wednesday and um, Fightful Select also went on to add um, that obviously with Matt leaving the company um, in April uh, there's the, there were going to be questions asked but the two sides Jeff and AW were looking at a renewal since then there haven't been extended conversations about bringing Matt in Matt Hardy of course is currently as well in TNA you've just recently seen the system go to the Hardy compound so Matt Hardy feels very much back in the stories there mm -hmm. and Jeff could be joining him too Fightful Select also reports that TNA sources told them they were interested in Jeff Hardy considering his history in the company. Um, with Matt working in TNA and TNA saying things are going well there, they've asked him to work additional dates. So yes, Jeff could be coming back to TNA, Jeff could be reuniting with Matt in TNA, and of course the big thing here is that TNA currently working with NXT and WWE means that that door could be open too. Yeah, it's like a little pathway to everything basically. Possibly, yeah. Uh, it totally makes sense that TNA would want to grab yeah. Jeff Hardy as soon as they possibly could. Uh, he still has a massive following, obviously, uh, and the history is there mm -hmm. um, through the company and his brother's there and everything. It makes total sense. Um, but yeah, like obviously he was in AEW a little bit longer because of injury time added to his contract yeah. originally, like, but that was a while ago, like mm -hmm. before this current thing. Um, so yeah, free agent. It's going to be interesting to see whether WWE send out some nibbles to the Hardy Boys for one last run? Yeah, like, I mean, let us know in the comments what you think about yeah. Jeff Hardy. Where do you want to end up? WWE. He's like, he's got that, like, weird star aura that's never seemed to have gone away, Jeff, hasn't yeah. it? I'm not sure that always applies to Matt. Matt keeps himself always out there. Jeff remains this, like, sort of, um, like, having been the ex WWE champion as well and reached that summit in WWE, yeah. I think that just, like, completed a story for him. People sort of hold him in that high esteem. And, like, regardless of what is kind of going on in his life at, yeah. at certain yeah. points, um, and, like, like where he is on the card or what he's actually wrestling, that entrance pop is always a Jeff Hardy 100%, pop. 100%, yeah. It <laughs> seems like it always will be. From uh, the uh, the post-Monday Night Raw free view to WrestleMania 33, that music indeed travels, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's why I pop for it, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm in that pop. <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, look out for Jeff Hardy, I guess, on uh, TNA and then potentially what, in the NXT 25-man Battle Royal on uh, TNA? <laughs> like the next logical you step, never know, it? that's yeah. just generally how it goes. Yeah. Um, but speaking of AW, sort of, not really, mm. um, Tony Schiavone. <laughs> Uh, it's not really at all, speaking of it. <laughs> um, you may have seen the sort of um, the Vice documentary doing the rounds. Yep. The WCW, um, basically who killed WCW, the kind of Rock X Dark Side of the Ring mm. production um, that people have been talking a lot about online. One yep. person that's been talking about it online is Tony Schiavone. Oh boy. And he is not a fan. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I've got a quote from him because he was on his uh, What Happened When podcast and he was asked about it and he says this about it. He says, the authority is the death of WCW. That program that's out now, that's the ultimate authority on everything. Those guys who produce that uh, know everything about wrestling. They're the smartest men in America. They know more about wrestling than I ever did. So who am I to talk bad about them? F them. Oof. He is not a fan of the producers of uh, Vice, the, the Dark Side of the Ring. So yeah. Comrade asked him again about why he gets so hot and bothered about them, and he just said, because they suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird this. Um, notable by their absence are Tony Schiavone and Sting from this Who Killed WWE yep. um, thing. It's odd. 
this is obviously being made for Vice by a lot of the people that are involved in Dark Side, the same people that are involved in Dark Side of the Ring, but because of Seven Books, it does feel like there's been a bit of an AEW freeze out. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of the WWE friendly talking heads that you typically see. That is in contrast to Dark Side, which often, yeah. like, and understandably, skews Vince McMahon and WWE in a negative light as a result of what happened to a lot of these wrestlers through working that schedule and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> amazingly, he's a big part of a lot of those stories. Indeed. <laughs> um, so it's quite weird how this one is kind of like straight away from that path. And yeah. yeah, Shivani and Sting, and there will be others, but those are the two big ones when I've been watching, thinking, where are those voices? And then you yeah. remember why politically that might be awkward right now. Um, it must I mean, be frustrating. It must be frustrating to have been in the guts of that. And yet again, WWE so has been relitigated, and you are not part of that and offering yeah, your takes. Part of the conversation. I yeah. mean, other people were part of the conversation. Like your favourite, uh, Kevin Nash, uh, defending the finger poke of doom, of course. Yeah. Great, great, great takes. Was great this, takes. Was this quote yesterday. I didn't get paid that much, so I was stoned to the bone while recording it. <laughs> All right, Kevin, you're back. You're back. It's fine. We're good again. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you think of the documentary down below if yeah. you've seen it. Because uh, yeah, are you are you like Tony Schiavone? Do you think they suck or do you like it? Who let really did kill WCW? Find out in episode Who? three when Vince Russo checks in. Because um, that story's never been told before. Oh god, I might. <laughs> um, I tell you, he's telling a story that's never been told before. Hmm. Christian Cage, and not just because he's taken the Wayne family on as his own and the patriarchy in 2024. This is more AEW WWE divide stuff, I suppose. He's done an interview with uh, Chris Van Vliet. And in it, he offers quite an interesting insight into the Christian Cage character as opposed to Christian that he's played with in WWE, obviously, yeah. with Edge and as a singles wrestler. He says, quote, they're completely separate entities in my mind. Christian Cage has never been in WWE. Christian has, but Christian isn't Christian Cage. And Christian, quite honestly, doesn't hold a candle to Christian Cage. It's not <laughs> even close. He goes on. Christian Cage can be just who he wants to be, without any constraints, without any politics, without anybody telling me to say this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. It's me being me. Either you make it work or you fail. Either way, it's on my own. It's interesting this, because like Christian's quite known, at, he's known as a relatively like pragmatic, affable sort within wrestling. Mm -hmm. It's pretty funny when he came back at the 2021 Royal Rumble and then parlayed that into his AEW debut. Yeah. And he took a chance on himself with TNA in the mid 2000s. Um, but this is like, it's not cutting, but I think it sort of draws a clearer line than a lot of wrestlers in this current era are willing to do. Like WWE is a hot property. The kind of pendulum has swung back in their favor in terms of talent, like jumping back that way. And yet he seems to be here, at least laying out why he much prefers the path that he gets to take as Christian Cage. I mean, you can see with the shackles off, he, like dropping F-bombs in his feud with Edge and yeah. just all the insane cruel stuff he gets to say. And it's probably, I get the difference and yeah. I get what he's illustrating, but you're not hearing many talents at the moment still speaking of WWE as this place where they just feel completely constrained as opposed to AEW. Yeah, it's an interesting one because obviously there's been a lot of changes within WWE yeah. at the minute and having this version of Christian Cage mm -hmm. in this version of WWE yeah. would kind of be fascinating to see yeah. what they would let him get away with mm. or how that character would look in a WWE presentation because it's completely different, like yeah. you say, from the Christian character. But he was kind of a pioneer in that era, at least, mm -hmm. of the jumping ships to TNA back in the day. Yeah. Because, like, obviously people did it in the WCW eras, but it had been quite a long time until someone had kind of had the balls to go, you know, screw this, I'm going to try this elsewhere. Felt amazing. Looked good for TNA. Yeah. That they looked like... Yeah, it was like the first, their yeah. first big steal yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of interesting, yeah, that he prefers that freedom is kind of obvious yeah. <laughs> yeah but just how sort of different those characters became over the years and especially to now and the work he's putting in is absolutely incredible but yeah like i say to see this this version of christian cage like if he did one more run in wwe what the hell would that look like now and what i love about a christian cage at this point in his career and he's deserved this as well is that you can't rule that run out even with him saying things like this i love the wrestlers yeah. with the ability to speak with such confidence and self-assuredness that he can say all of this and know that he's probably not like burning a bridge with yeah. WWE, they would absolutely love to pick him back up, given the chance. Yeah, there's like, no yeah. chance that Triple H reads that and goes, oh, what a bastard. Exactly, like, yeah. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't go on the he probably after. reads that and goes, yeah, he's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still want to put a blue dot on his face, but other than that, <laughs> other than that yeah, I'll bring him in, yeah. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Mm. Love Christian Cage at the minute. Uh, but AW, Wardlow, um, mm. hasn't been on TV for quite a while, no. since uh, last March, or this March, in fact, when yeah. he was uh, got beat by Samoa Joe um, at Big Business. Yeah. Um, but he has been filing a trademark for his name, Wardlow, which is actually his real surname mm. as well. Um, he's technically part of the Undisputed Kingdom, I guess, still, yeah. even though we haven't seen him in so long. Um, and it's, yeah, another move, like, uh, Penta also did this. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's not a 
guarantee, obviously, mm -hmm. but it very much feels like a move someone does before they're planning to go elsewhere. Yeah. This is the wrestling business, and mm -hmm. if you own your name in the wrestling business, that's quite a big thing. It's one of them ones, isn't it? Like, so he's appeared, um, yeah, as you say, that last match feels a lifetime ago already, yeah. but like he's appeared as like a background figure within the Kingdom. Adam Cole was shooting him evils when he made that last return and people got excited, right, here we go. Yeah. And it has yet again amounted to something of a false start. Roderick Strong has appeared with the Kingdom, but not with Wardlow. Um, I'm struggling to remember when MJF beat up Adam Cole. I don't think Wardlow was one of the people to come and make the save. Which again, that was like something that theoretically he could pick back up, MJF yeah. and Wardlow, but they haven't... He was calling out MJF on Twitter. Yes. He, MJF used the wolf yep. sort of graphics on a t-shirt, so he was calling out MJF on that. But that felt like more like maybe he was trying to angle himself yeah. into a feud rather than like actually someone being really pissed off. Or planting seeds or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's it like... There's a lot of history there. <laughs> well, it doesn't, and it doesn't feel like something they've been keen to explore. And I think yeah. more fans are into that than... It reflects a time when AEW was as hot as it was and people would like to fondly remember that and relive it with the Wardlow and Jeff. We're not there. Yeah. yeah, the Penta thing, I think, is what really sort of like fires this one up a little bit. Like the fact that he went and got his name right as the rumours are swirling that maybe WWE were taking an interest. Like, is Wardlow putting the feelers out? Is It's it's wrestling. Like, uh, we, it's a business at the end of the day. We talk about this a lot, like the stuff that like, gets reported by the great journalists that we aggregate is nothing compared to what's in the DMs between wrestlers <laughs> at any given time. Um, so yeah, could just, be, uh, could just be a man being smart with the investment in himself, but is that investment in himself going to be outside of AEW down the line? Who knows? He's had such a weird little run in AEW with stop-start yeah. pushes, and he's felt so close so many times now, mm -hmm. and they've never quite pulled that trigger. Yeah. For plenty of reasons, like oh, yeah. it's it's busy at the top. Like, it is there's, there's so much space. Being very generous, there, Phil, yeah. <laughs> um, so when you sort of get to the cusp of it, but mm. then it never quite gets that payoff. It's kind of the law of diminishing returns. It's that push is only going to get a little bit less the next time, and then uh, they're just doing it again, and it's just diminished. Oh, Lowered ceiling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, join us with some reckless speculation in the comments because that's the fun bit about all of this sort of stuff anyway. We've talked to loads recently, all these contracts coming, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Like people that wanted to relive the Monday Night Wars, you're getting it now. The mere fact that we can speculate on a award logo going one way or like a Chad Gable going the other, this is yeah. the fun bit. And it's Especially not just because the two the rest as well, with like money. TNA joining in with yeah, the party uh, and stuff. It's like, yeah, get a piece it's of the action. Good time TNA. for it, good time for it. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, if you uh, want to engage, do so in the comments below or get in touch with us on Twitter at WhatCultureWDB as these people did. Phil, they're wanting your hot takes. Hot takes! Uh, in particular, first of all, we uh, got a question from Darren4785, Mr. Dos Fist. Thank you very much, Darren, for all your correspondence. Um, Saying, morning, gents. Uh, do we see a new Uncle Howdy with the same lame mask you wore before? The Wyatt 6 reboot is not filling me with much joy this time around yet. Um, of course, all things, all systems that go for this Monday's Raw. Yep. Um, presumably, they'll get a lot of time post Clash at the Castle if all the crew maybe aren't back for it. Yeah. What's your take on that? Like the the, what exactly do you take from Uncle Howdy from the last time when it did get uh, laughed at a little bit? Um, and how do you think in general all this is going to play out? Yeah, it's an interesting one because obviously it's very early days with this sort yeah. of new Wyatt Six thing. But also the sort of Uncle Howdy character was never like explained as to who no. exactly it was. It was never outright said it was Bray Wyatt or anything like that. No. So like there is plenty of potential there of taking that character out, obviously, and mm -hmm. giving it to someone else and having that as the connection. Yeah. But it's like, do you keep that look? I don't like. It feels like they would, like they're doing this almost as a respect thing to Bray Wyatt. Yeah. So to take something that was part of within his creation and completely change it doesn't feel like it's in the same spirit of it. No, almost. I agree, so yeah. I, like I've got a feeling it'll end up being the same, uh, the basically the same look, mm -hmm. at least, if not like changed up a little bit. I think that character, like had to go undergo this sort of stuff quite a lot. Oh, we've really burned that bit of the character. <laughs> not literally, in one of the cases of the thing. But like we've really sort of, we've really damaged that character, but if you're gonna move it on, you still have to keep some of the old stuff with it. Yeah. Like if you think of the times when he thought like relaunches the Fiend, he never truly dropped the old Brie. We would see that revisited time and time again. Yeah. And that's probably it. You move forward with it a bit while paying homage and tribute. Yeah. Especially now, there's a lot, it's gonna be a yeah. lot more heartfelt. I can't wait to see like, I'm, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I sort yeah, of I no idea. where I disagree a little bit with Darren is that I, I will be leaning in. Like I want to see what this is. I want to see what it looks like. It's yeah, yeah. like the cast of characters are weird. Like Dexter Lumis and Joe Gate. These are not people that necessarily had these like dream runs in WWE so far. So how you know Nikki Cross kind of came close to it at one point as Nikki Ash. But yeah, it's um, it's I, I think it's going to have people's attention. Yeah, uh, the buzz isn't the White Rabbit buzz isn't there. I don't think the QR codes hit quite no, the no, this time around. Not. The but same. The, the, when you see it versus the speculation, I think is yeah. going to be the moment, isn't it? It's going to be fast. It's going to go one or two ways. It's either going to be 
like fun and entertaining, or yeah. it's going to be like a retribution. <laughs> yeah, I think and so. It, and it could it could very much, very easily swing one way or We're the other. We're looking for the swing, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, this is going to be a personal one, I think, to you, Phil, in your uh, capacity as the everything man of what culture do we do? Lee Cleesby uh, at uh, Leroy McCawson has been on. What are your thoughts on the current WWE pricing strategy for international events? I think Lee obviously is <laughs> asking that question at a very relevant time with Clash this weekend and the, uh, the obviously the gates that they're chasing as they got in Berkeley, France and the like. When they can't yep. get a crowd number, they want a dollar figure or whatever. Um, yeah, like we knew that this was possible with the TKO takeover because those UFC prices were always through the roof and yep. it's money, money, money. But um, you live this a little bit in a professional capacity. <laughs> so what is your overall take on this and the whys, the hows, and the what could happen? It's way too goddamn expensive. <laughs> uh, they are insane prices, yeah. some of these shows. I mean, even it doesn't. It's not even the uh, like the foreign shows, the like PLEs or whatever. Yeah. Like WrestleMania this year, the cheapest ticket was two hundred and twenty dollars, which is genuinely insane. Like you're pricing out a huge portion of your audience. Yeah. Now, obviously, they don't really care. It seems like the audience mm. is still going to watch on TV, regardless of whether they can go see it live. It's yeah. not like a a live touring business anymore. It's a TV business with a yeah. live portion on the side. So if they can just, if they can still fill the buildings by charging whatever the hell they want, mm -hmm. they are going to keep doing it until people stop buying tickets. I think that's it, isn't it? And they're just going to reach that point where it's like, okay, that's the limit. Yeah. And then that'll be it forever. That's the worry, Unfortunately. I think. Unfortunately. Like right now, like with WWE being a hot ticket and a hot product at the same time, it's almost like, not that yeah. these clash tickets, I'm not justifying the price of these, are all disgraceful, and yeah. you are. Like as a as a dad, and if my kids were into wrestling, like those, that would be a perfect family night ruined by that price. We yeah. simply could not hit that price point. Uh, they haven't sold out Clash at the Castle yet. They won't care. The yeah. number's going to be the, the figure, the dollar at the end, but like they, they would have wanted a sold out crowd and they're not there yet and it's, what, 24 hours away? Yeah. Um, but that's the thing for me is, as you say, once they hit that ceiling, the product will go cold again. This is just how wrestling works. Mm -hmm. But that price won't go down in line with it. They will find that new normal and one of these days you will be in a half empty building with some characters that maybe aren't connecting and you will have paid these prices for it and yeah. that's where it gets insane isn't it yeah that's yeah. where it gets mad depends how reactionary they are with yeah. this and whether they do flow with the times or mm. whether they just find their limit and stick to it yeah your feeling at the moment is um and i experienced this to a point with wrestlemania the you pay a price you pay a premium in some cases but you it's they are sending fans home happy so you yeah, leave, yeah, yeah. It's not you like leave feeling satisfied with your with your purchase yeah that too can't last forever yeah. And when it's at that price point, the, the risk is greater, isn't it? The risk versus reward yeah. is so much greater. Like I have no doubt everyone that paid whatever the price was for the Backlash in France ticket, uh, it, like, yeah. they went home happy after yes. that show and that crowd. And, and we'll probably come back experience, again. And we'll most likely come back again. Yeah. Like, people, they are good shows. They're mm. just really expensive shows. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I worry that we've not hit the ceiling. Like, I remember when US yeah, the first doing so. UK dates, and I was like, that's a curiosity thing I would like to. And yeah. then I would have, well, I'm not going to go to that. Mania yeah. in Vegas is going to be a big one just because yeah. it's not like a, a big city, it's like a destination city. Yes. So if people are already on, oh, holiday, and then spending money on holidays, mm -hmm. it's like holiday money is a very different thing to being at home money. Indeed. <laughs> like holiday money's silly and you can spend whatever you want and it doesn't matter until you get home and you're like, oh my God, what have I done? Luckily though, if you need to save on beer and blackjack money, you can check in at the beautiful Oyo Hotel and Casino. Get in touch with uh, us too. We, uh, we want to talk some turkey. Thanks for the fun. <laughs> um, last question today, coming from uh, Ashley, at Ashley Short 13 And um, this is uh, flipping over to AW. Is AW going to break one of its most staunch rules and have a screwy finish to Osprey Swerve at Forbidden Door so that Swerve retains the title while Osprey remains strong and quote unbeaten uh, thanks lads Ashley also adds here as well Phil you're going to have to help me with this one uh, Ashley also mentions it's coming home <laughs> um, you got a hot take on that? Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what that means. I don't think you would. Mm, uh, yes, like, Swerve and... Uh, it's just gibberish. <laughs> what are you talking about? Swerve and... Uh, I'll chat <laughs> with Wilborn, Ashley. Thank you for that. Um, Swerve and Osprey, it's big. They've it gone big. for the one that people can't call, and that's what you want from a pay-per-view main event. Yes, and it's different to a lot of AW shows these yeah. days. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's one that could go so many different ways mm. and you also but it's also it's one that it, it's not just about this one event it's about all in yeah and and like yeah. what's going to happen there as well and sort of all uh out i guess to a lesser extent mm -hmm. but it's like there's big shows coming up as well that this is obviously going to feed into and what is the plan for that show and how are you going to get there through this show mm. so i feel like rules in wrestling are only rules 
to be broken at some point. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. There is no firm yeah. rule in wrestling that isn't broken at some point to tell a story. Mm. And like, so long as you don't do it all the time. Yeah. I think it's absolutely fine. And if this is like one time that they do something screwy in a main event of a pay per view, mm -hmm. after like five years of like Nafal, have they? Yeah, they've been. been but they must have done something. I don't know in the main event. Very little with top title. Little. Like it got a little bit dicey with MJF towards the end there. But yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, never I really. think you can be forgiven for doing it. Yeah. One time, and that's the kind of trust that you build up by putting these things in place and not doing them constantly every single week on TV. Mm -hmm. So I think you, you can get away with it. We're uh, we're going to be using some clash uh, the castle predictions later on today. But before we uh, wrap up here, gun to head, Swerve or Osprey at Forbidden Door. I always had Osprey. Originally, mm -hmm. kind of. I don't know why leaning more towards Swerve now. Mm. Again, you're thinking Wembley, look, weren't you? Yeah. And everything's sort of thinking beyond the show itself. Like, yeah. yeah. Until, it was until Osprey won the belt. Yeah. And then it was like, right, like, it's Osprey, and then Osprey's going to defend the title and all, all in. Yeah. But then I did think it was strange that they were doing the match with Osprey here because you want the win at all in, surely. You would think. Not yeah. the retention. So. Mm -hmm. What do I know? <laughs> they've got us. They've got us on the hook. Um, and if we've got you on the hook, thank you very much for watching us this Friday morning. Yo. Uh, you can follow all of us at What Culture WWE. And uh, until next time, you can watch this video right here. We'll see you soon.